Hello everyone. Thanks for joining us for this APPI Learn by Doing webinar. These are um, given a couple of times a month and their objective for the long term is really to build as many precog pros as we can, people who will do this professionally, and we have a path for that. Um, and that's one of the reasons we keep such good statistics. Today we're going to do a focus on the judging, which is a very important part of the process, um, and the um, whole associative remote viewing will, of course, um, begin by giving an overview of that. And all the time, the idea of this long-term mindset is so important. You know, one prediction really, you know, could be a lot of fun um, and all that, but it's just not meaningful in terms of it being integrated in your life. We're really doing our training um, with the associative remote viewing, with the perspective of um, long-term um, people working with us and working with themselves. Now, this symbol, the eye with the sigh over it, um, more and more I'm beginning to use it as the symbol for the precog professionals um, who have mastered this this skill of purposeful precognition as opposed to a deja vu or knowing when a person is going to um, call, uh, you get a sense of that person you haven't heard of for 10 years. We always hear those kind of stories. But those are um, clearly not purposeful. Um, ARV is really about purposeful precognition. And the universe permits that, and why not learn how to use it? The integration of precognition, and later I'll make a distinction, but it's really just a point of view between precognition and retrocausality. And integrating in these in your life, um, uh, I really think can, can just make your life more meaningful, more happy, um, their connections with health, and associative mode viewing can be part of that. Um, we're talking about a subject which is much bigger than just associative remote viewing, but it's a great, um, a great place to learn how to do it and be able to see your progress, etc. Now, <clears throat> here's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about the associative remote viewing um, for the newbies and reminders in terms of uh, the whole mindset going along with it. Um, and we will be emphasizing, and we already are, as you can see, the long-term mindset. And then the analysis judging this about the T, 50%, the G, G stands for Gestalt, we want to talk about that, and we'll actually be doing this because we're going to be doing a prediction uh, for an outcome a month in the future. All of these uh, learn by doing uh, are set up that way, as opposed to the ones where we basically um, each group is on um, a one or two per week uh, schedule um, in terms of making predictions. But here we, we're going for the longer one, um, partly as an experiment and partly of interest. So we'll be doing the remote viewing session. We'll actually be doing the judging, so we'll be able to apply apply that approach. And um, the way we'll be doing this is your transcripts from the remote viewing session and your judging session, I'm going to ask you to send copies of them um, to me, and then we can share and, and discuss it. So that's one of the best ways to learn is to actually discuss what you did and with others um, looking at it. So um, that's always a fun and interesting part of what we do here. And then feedback will come from this a month or so from now. 
we happen to be caught up on all the previous ones we've done, so we're not doing any feedback um, today, but we always use these um, um, uh, classes to do feedback as well. <clears throat> and that, as you'll see, of course, is very important, the feedback session. So let's talk about associative remote viewing, ARV, and we'll talk about it first in linear time. Um, which is actually the least interesting way to talk about it. But since our minds work that way, let's really understand um, un understand it in linear time. And of course, we go and do this in linear time. So it always begins with the remote viewing session. And when you remote view, um, the target that you will see and experience during your feedback session. So this is what you do during your remote viewing session. You're basically looking at a target that's going to come later in time. And what's so marvelous about this is that consciousness has access to information from distant places and distant times. Um, we're well past trying to prove this. That's been done done so many times. But, you know, getting this deep in your gut is an important part of the whole process for the long term, that your consciousness can, in fact, do this. So you do your remote viewing session, and what you're viewing is a target that you will see during your feedback session sometime in the future. So you will be asked to describe and sketch your feedback target. Very straightforward once you accept the precognition is real. These two sessions become entangled, if you will, and you can get information about the target, which you see here, which you know for sure here, and share it with your remote viewing session. Now, the value in this, um, in terms of associative remote viewing, comes when the analysis and judging is done. This is a separate session done before the outcome, so before the feedback target in linear time. And the judge is making what I'm calling here an action choice. Now. That action is based on the fact that there are two possible targets which the tasker has defined, which will basically be an answer to a yes-no question. So the judge is the one who's going to make that determination of yes or no, which might be, um, will the market move up? So often we present this as an up or down, or in sports, um, over or under a certain number of points that a bookmaker sets. But it's always binary. Um, so it's always equivalent to a yes-no question. Now, given the answer, he then can take action. You know, he can buy a stock, sell a stock. He can wager over, wager under. So that's what I mean by action choice, because you're now getting real information um, based on what the feedback target is. And that's because, since there are two possible targets, possible Keyword possible targets at this stage, looking at it from a linear time perspective, one of these targets is associated with yes, the other target is associated with no. So the actual target that you see um, at the feedback session will always be what actually happens. We call that sometimes the actualized. Um, reality, the actualized target of the two possibilities. So a judge is sitting here, and if he gets a really good match with the possible target that's yes, hey, he says, okay, it's going to be a yes. That's why there's a good match, or there's going to be a no, depending on how um, good the match is to one or the other. So that's ARV. It allows you to take action 
based on the remote viewer getting a really good match to one or the other of the possible targets. And one is associated with yes randomly, the other is associated with no randomly. Okay, let me say it another way. Um, um, you know, I guess I've been doing this so long, it just seems so straightforward and simple, but for newbies, it um, sometimes isn't. Now, frankly, I think even an easier way of looking at this, once you accept precognition, is recognizing that we are doing purposeful precognition, and you can think of it as beginning with the feedback session when you know the truth. So when you're thinking about it in this point, it's like retrocausality in the sense that you know the truth here and you are influencing. The other thing what you're doing is remotely influencing yourself at an earlier time. You are entangling with yourself um, at, during your remote viewing session. So, I mean, this is sort of amazing that the world and the universe permits this, but this is what consciousness does. So it's during your feedback session, we say it all begins here because you know the truth here. And then you then your cue, which came earlier in linear time, but not sort of in effective time, your cue is describe and sketch your, and we use a six digit, um, um, we call it a coordinate or a transcript reference number, but it's something which is associated with the feedback target. You will see this number when you see your feedback target, which is the mechanism, one of the mechanisms for entanglement. Now, the feedback targets that we use, there have been lots of different kinds used, physical targets, people go out to places and that's a target. You can use objects. We use photo sites because we've got a system here that uses the internet. People are all over the world using it. So, the feedback target that you're going to see here, and there are two possible ones that we talk about, are photo sites. So let's make sure you understand what a photo site is. So a photo site refers to a particular site location, so a real place at the particular time the photo was taken. So these will be photographs of real places. Now, Consciousness is expected to move um, um, to that site at the time the photo was taken. Okay, and then the tasking is to describe or sketch, okay, the feedback target, but in more detail, what can be readily verified or easily inferred from the photo. Now, that's very important because a judge is going to be looking at your transcript of the target and we want to make his life as easy as possible. We want him to get the right answer. And so you want things which are readily verified or inferred from the photo. Um, and the judges um, understand that that was what your objective is and they do the judging um, based on that. Now, for example, the kinds of things which tend to come in for the remote viewers are what I'm calling first impression gestalts. When you first look at a picture, you get a first impression of the sort of the big picture stuff. And um, we'll talk more about that. But um, water might be, you know, an example if there's a lot of water around or action if it's a real action scene um, um, things of that sort and of course you use and this is important to understand all of your senses you know we call this remote viewing but sound smells tastes your whole 
nervous system, all of your normal senses are activated, can be activated. And when you do a remote viewing session, you sh should be alert to those and put those down in your in your transcript. Um, and, um, you know, color, shapes, dimensions, all of these things. Pick up emotions, um, tactile sens sensations. So the photo site is as if kind of you were there. Um, so... And that is what your consciousness does. And you do it at the remote viewing session. And then when you look at the photo site here, you send your consciousness there very intentionally, picking up all the things which you can and then sharing it with your remote viewing session. When you look at pictures normally, you often, you just sort of almost naturally do that. Um, you know, uh, you just sort of, Part of you imagines you were there. If there are noises in the background, um, you almost can imagine them, especially if it's a place you've been before. Um, you know, that's more like memory. But what we do here is what we call future memory. So here you're going to go to that place. And if there are sounds in the background, you're going to imagine hearing them. You're going to hear them. And you're going to share that with your remote viewing task, with your remote viewing uh, um self at an earlier time. Okay, now, so we've now really focused on the entanglement of the remote viewing and the feedback session and how it starts here. Let's now go into the judging phase, right? We've talked already about their, the fact that there are two possible feedback targets, two possible photo sites, one of which will be the target. Okay, so the target is the photo site. Nothing else, no matter what happens between here and here, you're going to see so many images that, um, um, you know, you kind of ignore all of those. The target is your feedback photo site. Now, Here's an example, okay? One of these randomly, and in this example, this was associated with no, this was associated with yes. Just really trying to make this absolutely clear. So if your description comes in and you say, I sense water, um, oh, there's tall stuff around, um, I see pink, um, um, uh, oh, I'm getting a sense of like almost a, a, um, a city, you, you know, we might not get it exactly right, but those are the kind of words that come in. Well, your judge is going to say that the answer is yes, and he can take action on that. Um, okay. So frankly, I believe, um, ARV, the idea of it is easy. The magic is in training yourself to do it better and better over the long term. And, you know, very often we see beginners come in who haven't really thought much about it. We just ask them to describe and sketch a target and they do marvelously. And in some ways, that's almost the mindset to have each time you go into it. A lot of people recommend, imagine you're brand new at this and you're just going in and kind of interested in it and stuff like that. Um, but each of you, as you do this over and over and over again, needs to come up with the strategy that works um, best for you. But, um, okay, so I, I want to stop here. Are there any questions or anything at this stage? So you, you, you know, a lot of you have heard this before and it's a reminder, but if there's anyone brand new, um, feel free to ask a question. That's what ARV is all about. Okay, so this kind of association. Marty? Uh-huh. Um, this is Evie. Uh, Hi, Evie. You know, I belong to that Facebook remote viewing group. You could 
recommend that for everybody because they've been putting links on there of things you can listen to. Mm -hmm. And I listened to that one link from Lori Williams a couple of weeks ago, and she talked about the six different gestalts. And up until now, I never really understood that. And, and, and since she talked about that, now I understand how that sets. If you do that first, that really sets your session. And, and so, you know, if, if uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about go to that site and read and listen to some of those links. I mean, I, I, it helped me not only doing the session, but, but in, in, in judging what I actually was thinking when I wrote this stuff. Okay, that's terrific. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about Gestalt. Um, if you've got the link, you know, handy, why don't you put it in the chat box so others... Um, um, no, I'm on my tablet right now because okay, my computer okay. is okay. loading up, so I didn't want to do it. If they it's email on that, me, they can email me. site and somebody put it up about, you know, 10 days ago or so, and it was... It was okay. Several YouTubes come up when you click on one of those. So I listened to more than one, and I don't remember which one it was. That okay, had that. well, and that's fine. Um, and, and this she's was one got of ours. This was what I interviewed, Lori, because then they can find it on our website. Um, no, this was, uh, this was a like a radio show interview, but also she's got lots of links on her website. You can go and read okay. about Gestalt's, yeah. too. Okay, um, thank you. And we'll talk more yep. about Gestalt's. And in fact, um, um, I'll probably even ask you later f for you to put in the chat box what you see as the major Gestalt's. Okay, so let's go. Let's let's go forward, and we will talk about it again. One of the things which I've done in a previous talk, and um, some people don't kind of like this idea that you are a self-programming quantum computer. Um, but this is really a rather marvelous reality. You know, you might not like the word computer because computers are sort of back in the days when you think of them as being really, really hardwired. What we have, you know electromechanical, using transistors. This is a plot of calculations per second per thousand dollars. So how much does it cost per thousand dollars um, doing calculations versus time? Okay, so we're here now at 2017. Notice this scale is logarithmic. This is 10 to the 6th, 10 to the 8th, 10 to the 10th. The calculations per thousand dollars is going up in what we talk in being exponential. A straight line here is exponential. It's actually going up even faster than the standard exponential. Um, and it's getting close to where by the year 2030 or so, 2050 or so, um, we might be equivalent to the human brain. Now, one of the things you have to realize that they're starting to use here are things like nanotechnology. They're working at the levels of maybe your chromosomes, your DNA. They're beginning to build things very, very small. They're talking about having robots build other robots. You know what? It's a little bit, actually, a lot like what you are. And you know, I just don't know how to say this better than you're magnificent. <laughs> you know, the, the technology is one of the few things that has been growing over time, not only in computer, but in lots and lots of areas. Because of our conscious minds, our capabilities, you need to feel really strong and powerful and confident that you can do precognition. 
And that's what this whole talk was about. And that's what I, I would like you to just always have feelings uh, about. Um, you're rather magnificent. And the fact that they're going to be building quantum computers, because the fact that consciousness has the capabilities it has, like non-locality, is due to the fact that we live in a quantum world, which allows backward communication in time. And you're doing that. Um, whether computers will ever be able to do it or not, I don't know. But I do know that human beings can do it. Now, we have no feedback example today because we're all caught up. That does come from a link. Um, this is just an example of the link. Everything we do is over the Internet. So I just wanted to mention the feedback because we usually do, do do that. And then you would click on a link like this and up would come your feedback actualized target. But what we want to do now is transition to talking about actually doing a new prediction. <laughs> I got asked to do um, a different kind of Bitcoins. Um, it's getting a lot of press now. I don't know how many of you know anything about Bitcoins, but I hope you've um, at least heard it so you can have some association with it. However, I must say you don't need that because the Bitcoin price, and here a price is here, it's now up at almost 12,000 when I did this plot. It's actually gone up a little bit since then. I did this a few days ago. Um, but it's just like anything else. It's price versus time. So here we are back about a month, and it went up really dramatically. Um, the 18th um, to today, so even less than a month. And you can see it went up from 8,000 to about 12,000. So, um, you know, it's a reasonable question to ask, will it really keep going up? And this is the list of the questions we've asked up to now um, with the date when we asked them. And here's the last one. Will the Bitcoin... Um, versus U.S. dollar be over 14,000 a month from now. And you can see here's 8,000, here's 12,000, here's 14,000. So we're basically asking, will it continue um, to go up? Now, if it goes up and comes down, notice the way we've asked this, will it be over 14,000 on January 6th at 6 a.m. PT? Um, so you have to get very specific uh, on your question. And so this is a very specific question. So this is the one we're going to be taking on. Um, there's no front loading here because there's so much randomness in what's associated with the pictures and um, all of that. Um, so I'm not the least bit concerned where you should be. You just still describe and or sketch your feedback target. The computer will randomly associate it with one of two pictures. This is your coordinate or transcript reference number. So this will be, and we'll be getting that shortly. But for the newbies, it turns out I don't spend a whole lot of time talking about the remote viewing because it, believe it or not, is almost the simplest. Once you set your intention, you get quiet, you put on your transcript whatever words, phrases, and sketches come to mind. And generally, um, they're at the level of words like this. Um, they're relatively simple-like words. We avoid naming because that comes from the intellect. And the intellect, I like to set it aside, it's the subconscious, uh, really what we call the right brain, it's a little oversimplified, but it's, it's the, the, the right brain that is sort of the fun, happy, childlike 
brain um, that has this easy access to the feedback target. And you can see these kind of words, uh, dimension, in here. And this was done by Daz uh, Smith. Um, and this is just the kind of word remote viewers get. You can see they're simple, they're broad. Under dimensions, he put motion, you know, fast. Uh, he's got slow, straight, tall, thick um, um, sounds are the kind of sounds you would say if you were, you know, a, a, a kid. Banging, booming, loud, uh, maybe whooshing, whirring. Um, and so these are the kinds of words that tend to come up in remote viewing. If you're doing really, really long sessions, then you might start getting naming things. Um, tend to be more tend to be more accurate. But early on, the high level naming, um, you know, instead of saying tall and metal, um, gee, I get tall metal triangle, ah, Eiffel Tower. We call that an analytical overlay. And you write AOL, put it on the right side of your page, and move on. Now, Joe McMonagle is probably the best remote viewer, public at least best remote viewer in the world. You know, we certainly don't know all the remote viewers. I mean, Ed May, who's been the scientist associated with this, um, going way back to the Stanford Research Institute days, they have pointed out what is just sort of true that um, intention, attention, and expectation play a very important role in the success of both application and research of remote viewing. And so setting that um, intention rather clearly to describe and sketch your feedback target paying attention to what you're getting, and expecting that. And the expectation is where this confidence level comes in, um, which over for the long term, hopefully you build up more and more. Um, and I suggest, hey, you're not going to be perfect, but you can get better and better at this. Um, and you need to have that kind of expectation, again, deep in your gut. Um, you're going to intend for every one of your remote viewings to do a really good job, and you're going to expect it. And also, you're going to intend to get better and better, and you're going to expect it. So the cue is always, as we've talked about, describe and sketch your feedback target. Um, I now do want to talk a little bit about these first impression gestalts because they're the kind of thing that tends to come up first. Here's a picture on your screen. What, what hit you first about that? Huh? Maybe click the chat box or turn on your thing, um, uh, turn on your mic, or I'll tell you. What I see is first, but you got a first impression, you know, long, um, you know, the word road may have come up, but that might be a little high level. Your subconscious would probably get long. You probably want to sketch, you know, something like this vertical, um, line, you know, horizontal lines on your, your paper. Um, you would get something like um uh, vegetation, you might get a lot of verticals, uh, that sort of thing. Okay, but here I think you'd be moved to probably sketch this um, more more than anything else. Here's another one, very different. Water, blue, pink, buildings. Remember I showed this earlier and talked about it structures, those are the kinds of big picture gestalts that might come come to mind. You might want to sketch a rectangle with rectangles in it. They're all over the place here. Okay. Um, and then when you do your judging, you want to be able to put not only the first impression gestalts down, 
but those which will differentiate. Notice there's vegetation here um, as well. And that's typical. There's in most pictures, there's some common overlap, and the remote viewers, for one reason or another, tend to go to it because I believe they do have access to both of them, no matter how hard we've tried in the past to not give it to them. Once a judge looks at the two of them, and we even once had two separate judges, each judge only looked at one of them, um, remote viewers seem to be getting information from both. That's part of your training. Part of your intention is to describe and sketch what will also make it easy for your judge, what will also be distinguishing characteristics. You know, you definitely want to say water and draw the structures here and things of that sort. Um, if this is the one, but if this is the one, then you want to, you know, give the essence of a road, um, you know, maybe a bunch of verticals next to each other. Now, that might be separate from here. Um, and that's why judging has its own um, has its own challenging, has its own challenges. So, um, so I just wanted to kind of share that with you. Now, through all of this, really, and right now, start getting into a really happy mood. You know, smile. <laughs> You're taking on such a, a marvelous, mysterious uh, area that it really ought to bring a certain amount of joy to you um, every single time you do it. And uh, I just really hope that's the case. Right now, try to get into that um, mindset. Uh, here, maybe this helps or go back to a place where something really um, funny, interesting happened and think about it. Want your nervous system, your consciousness system, to get into a positive, happy mood because we're getting ready to do our remote viewing session. And um, again, we're going to be doing this in a purposeful fashion. Uh, we're here, entangling here. Okay, so, so now you're getting to the place where, okay, I'm now ready to go ahead and I need to get my coordinate. How do I do a remote viewing session without a coordinate? Well, we're using the approach called WE for Winning Entanglements Protocol, and everything is done online through either email or our server, and it always starts with um, emails in terms of things. So. Uh, we have a group manager that puts those out, and I'm the group manager here. And so I had sent earlier an email. You'd go, of course, to your own email. And here is the example of the kind of email that goes out. We're the webinar workshop group. Um, really do take this very seriously enjoy your precogning it's it's fun don't you think you'd do better if you're in a positive place rather than a negative one a happy place and when i um wrote this i wrote what the task was sometimes we we don't sometimes we do but i did here will the bitcoin be over fourteen thousand on january 6 at the specific time we always give the date um and then we give when the transcripts are due, which are today. These actually were default. I probably could have left those off. Um, and that's it. So to start, and each person, well, well, here you'll see. All you do is click a link, very link oriented. Um, this is the page that comes up. Let me make it bigger. You put in your email. Now, I'm representing all of us here, so we'll all have the same target. Um, but you would put in your name, and you would get a unique target, unique to you. And here you can see Webinar Workshop is already clicked. These are the other possible groups. We're going to do one coordinate, 
after you get more comfortable, you may or may not want to go to two coordinates. Um, um, it will be for the same prediction, but we're going to do one coordinate. And then you simply click here. And there you go. We now have um, our coordinate. So on a top of a sheet of paper, this is our coordinate. You should write and say this out loud because a month from now, I'm going to ask you to say this out loud again. So it's 332713. Do say it out loud. When you're saying it out loud, it's like vibrating within you in a unique way, right, through all of your DNA. And when you say it out loud at feedback time, it acts like a beacon. You know, there are a lot of different kinds of beacons you can use, but you know what? Saying the coordinate out loud is a very good one. Um, because notice as you're doing that, you're setting your intent by saying it out loud you're automatically, and you can add to it. Your intent is to describe and sketch the target you'll see at feedback time. So say it out loud, 332713. And when you start your session, you want to say it out loud again. Oh, wait a minute. Turn you off. Um, you'll say it out loud again. So the procedure now is we'll get ready to do our remote viewing session and then we upload it to our um, server so that the group manager has it the judge has it a lot of you here will be doing self-judging but some people use independent judging but it goes up to a server um, and is saved and you have access to it later uh, you have access to all kinds of things that you'll be writing in here as you'll see later so the coordinate three three two seven one three, and now let's get back to here. So on a sheet of paper, um, this is sort of the nominal way people have modified this uh, in their own in their own fashion. But you put the coordinate, which I ask you, you usually put it on the top. Uh, these are all preliminaries below kind of a line here. You put your name, the date, the time. Say the coordinate again out loud. We're going to do a cool down, and you're going to begin by writing the coordinate again. And most people nowadays, because of the standard training going back to the military days, will do a squiggle, which is like an ideogram which has sometimes identified shapes. Sometimes it's actually like a pic pictogram. You'll actually get information. But you, it starts things off. You get feelings from there. And then you go into your gestalts, um, all of the kinds of sensory information, textures, colors, smells, tastes. <clears throat> if anybody's interested, I can send them a copy of this. Just email and ask for it. Um, and then room for sketches, and then the analytical overlays, which are also called trash. Just when you get high-level intellectual stuff, you know, red, round, oh, it must be a ball. You put it over here, it gets rid of it, and then you get quiet again and wait for more information um, to come in. Put it down on your transcript, go down again. Um, but the high-level stuff, the analytical overlays, um, um, we usually put here on the right. Okay, so we're going to go into the cool down now, and the cool down is really very important because you're getting rid of the day to day chatter of your left brain, if you will, and um, opening yourself up, setting up your intention, getting really feeling good about your expectation, and being prepared to. Pay attention to what your subconscious gives you and generating your transcript. Um, so let's basically do it. You know your cue. Describe and sketch your 332713 feedback target. 
Joe Fack thinks it's like 75% of the discipline, getting open to receiving the information, getting rid of the things which um, are in the way, because the information is out there. Uh, so you just get very quiet and do it. And what we've got here is um, a lot of people like to use Hemisync. Some of you may have already started, <coughs> and that's fine, because you know if you've done this uh, several times, you've got your own technique. Not everybody uses Hemisync. I'm going to give you 10 um, minutes total. Roughly half of that gets used for cool down. Some people do it in just a few minutes. Some people might take six, seven minutes, and then, wow, a lot of information comes in. Everybody is unique. Um, but roughly half for cool down and half for doing your session. Set your intention, your expectation, um, and witness. Uh, this is paying attention to what your sub provides. I am going to actually put in the chat box, for those of you who are still here, here's where you can get the... Um, Hemisync sounds right there, and in it, there's like a five minute, very quiet notice that says you're five minutes, and then a one minute notice. Okay, so with that, I'm going to turn this on here, and um, 10 minutes, I will come back. Enjoy. Marty, could you please give me the coordinate number again, please? Yes, three three two seven one three. Thank you. Okay, all of you enjoy your precogan.
about 30 seconds to go, you might get another impression or two. Okay, why don't you come back to your normal waking state. Stretch a little. <laughs> I hope that was enjoyable. And uh, all got <coughs> accurate information. That's what makes the remote viewing part You're just sort of witnessing, listening, watching your own senses. Hopefully, it's quite interesting to you. See the stuff that comes up. It's always good to look for surprises. Okay, so. You know, if some of you feel you still got more information, fine. Um, but at this point, we're going to move now to the analysis judging session. <laughs> this is where the yes-no gets decided so that we can take action. And as we've talked, and hopefully you, you now appreciate, there are two possible targets. Um, let me first do this one um, again because it sort of does put analysis and the judging session and this is a full up session primarily intellectual now so you know that's why we get you back into your kind of normal state there um, I alone know the contents of this envelope okay so this is our skeptic here you are here the, the remote viewer and um, while this is a little higher level than normal, but it's a charcoal drawing, he says, of a woodchuck eating a small orange. And then, of course, the skeptic says, nice try, you little fraud. But that's a long way from an ink drawing compared to a charcoal drawing of a beaver compared to a woodchuck eating a tangerine compared to a small orange. As a judge, you would give him very, very high marks for that. And that's the point. In judging, um, the transcripts are not like exact sketches. They don't generally get 100% accurate. There's noise in there. Um, it uses analogies, metaphors, similar to resemblance. And you take all that into account, but to a point. Um, you don't want to have to stretch it too far. And you'll get a sense of that. Again, this is why you're in there for the long term. Often people will give themselves too high marks. Now, some people will give themselves too low marks. But after doing this for a while and, and seeing what your results are, um, whether it's a hit or a miss, um, and during the feedback session, you kind of review the, the judging versus the correct target. Um, you will learn. And that's one of the real reasons it's important to just do this for the long term, because that's where the learning comes over the long term. Um, I, after seeing so many of these, um, think people need to judge a bit harder. Um, if you have any sense that you're pushing it a little bit, uh, don't, don't mark that as being a, a good match to some element in your transcript. Just leave it alone um, and don't call it a, a match. And that goes for individual elements versus um, the whole transcript. Um, but that's where the judgment is involved, whether it's self-judgment or independent independent judging. Now, 
um, this is the way I'm basically recommending we do the judging. Um, rather than what some people do is if they get one really good match on their whole transcript. Oh, I got it, I got it. Uh, you know, and they'll give themselves a high score because they feel confident. That's not what the judging is about. It's judging how well at remote viewing t session time when you generated your transcript, do you match the actual feedback target that will be presented to the viewer later? It's, it's about that. And we ultimately use the TARG scale, which is from zero to seven. Um, but Joe came up with um, a, a good way of getting there, a very good way of getting there. And that is based on 50% of the weight being these first impression gestalts. If your consciousness can't pick up the major gestalts, the major things going on there, um, and they're usually, you know, two, three, one or two that sort of grab you, that sort of bring the whole picture together. Um, and, uh, um, Okay, so maybe you didn't get it this time. Nothing wrong with passes. The big thing we try to avoid are misses. Passes are okay. So 50% are going to be these first impression gestalts. And these are the things that, the way I put it, smack you in the face, get you in the ballpark. Um, there can be more more than one. Uh, I don't know what the six were that, uh, Lori talked about, and Evelyn, if you want to quickly list them in the chat box, or um, that would be that would be useful. But um, I don't think you can limit them to just six. Um, different pictures have different things, which are grabbers. There might be a picture which has so much red in it that I would say the color red would be the gestalt. That if you didn't put red on your page you downgrade it a little bit. It doesn't go to a zero necessarily because there might be other things that you got that would gestalt like. But I can see the color red um, being what I would call here a first impression gestalt. But certainly things like water or gestalt, uh, structure is the kind of word that comes up often that's a, a gestalt. Um, maybe people. Uh, uh, things like that. If there are a lot of people in the picture, you'd expect to say something about people. Okay, so that's 50% are these first impression gestalts. And then the other 50% um, are based, and we'll talk a little bit about the weighting, um, based on specific counts with the elements versus the total number of perceptions. So you know, if your perceptions, and which include sketches, are obviously um, an important perception. In fact, sketches, sometimes you can view them as having more than one perception uh, or element in them. Um, but, you know, if you get a high percent of matches with those, that's really good. But if you only get one or two out of 20 that are really good, and even if they're really good, I would say you downgrade the um, importance of the um, whole uh, process of judging. Okay, so ultimately we give a zero to one on how good your first Gestalt impressions were, and then the ratio between, which comes out to be zero to one, between the number of elements that um, match, and then we do this for photo site A and for photo site B. So we end off with confidence rankings um, for both of those. And the connection to the TARG system is very, very simple. We just take the zero to ones, divide by two, and multiply by seven, because TARG scale um, goes from zero to seven. So you can add the first impression gestalt from zero to one, the element ratio from zero to one, and just multiply it by 3.5. Um, the TARG scale now 
is um, uh, pretty well known and it's pretty straightforward except there's ambiguity in it and let's talk about that. The straightforward part is 0, 1, and 2 get you from no correspondence, little correspondence, and then some correct elements, but you know, we would say it's chance. You know, by chance, you're going to maybe get one color right, um, you might get a shape right, but there's just not enough um, um, to, to really want to say it's more than chance. So then we would give it a confidence ranking of two. The three is a mixture now of correct and incorrect elements, but enough of the former to indicate that you really did make psychic contact with the target. If you get up to three, you're saying, I think I made psychic contact with the target, but it's, you know, it's just on the margin there. A four, you now say good correspondence with several matchable elements, but some incorrect information. Um, but a four is good. You're feeling really, really comfortable uh, with that. So if you're, um, you, you put down a four and you use the approach we just outlined, it comes out to a four. Um, th that's pretty good. You know, you probably got pretty good on the fig and pretty good on the um, element match. Now a five, the words he uses here are unambiguous, unique, matchable elements. Now we've talked about what that exactly means and that's a judgment. But you know, you can see the words are coming up and getting stronger and stronger. I mean, unambiguous, okay, very clearly associated with the particular um, uh, transcript and photosite match. Okay, this is really, really good. But you still have some incorrect information. That's what a five means. And a six is good correspondence um, with good analytical information. So now you're getting into the AOL territory. You happen to get one of your AOLs where you might have named the function of the target correctly, um, relatively little incorrection, or you might have named the target and have almost no incorrect information. That gets you up to six or seven. Okay. So we use 3.5 between this three where, yeah, you've got some psychic, but on the margin, to a four where there's good correspondence. That's a 3.5. Um, and that would be wagerable. Another way of saying it, if you give yourself a 3.5, you're basically saying your transcript um, is good enough to wager a few bucks. Here's a graph which I put out, if you don't like to do the mathematics, but it's basically the same thing. If you add the 0 to 1 for the, the gestalt, the first impression gestalt, the element ratio, you get 0 to 2, and you can come up here. So if those two come up to 1, you're just marginally wagerable. And then here you can see a 1.5 gets you up to a 5, etc. So let's do it. Now, um, what I need to do, the next step in the process, um, notice the last thing we did was um, your transcript. So in terms of the protocol itself, the last thing we did was the transcript. Um, the next thing that each of you would do when you're doing this on your own is upload your transcript. And I'm going to show you how to do that. You have to get this onto the computer you're working with. I think more and more people are doing all of this on your smartphone. The smartphone will actually let you get to this page so you can get the coordinate. You can then, when you hit browse on your smartphone, it'll give you an option to take a picture and use that picture. So you can take a picture of your transcript. And if it's two pages, two pages work out just fine. You do it in landscape and it comes up. Um, if you happen to be someone that's doing more than two, then you want to get it on your computer and put it someplace where you can find it, um, you know, documents or some subset. Uh, and then, um, 
simply find it. What I do, since I don't do a transcript, I've made up for purposes of just like this, what I call a dummy transcript. Um, and then you simply click open. You can see the name is here. You hit browse, and when you hit browse, up is going to become the beginning of the judging. So you now say, when you go to this step and you do this, I'm now ready to start my judging. So now for the first time, we'll begin to, we'll be able to see the two, um, uh, and you hit, okay, browse, then you hit submit. And so we'll be able to see the two pictures. Now, I've done something different this time. I've actually changed the coding. So what I want us to do today, um, and I'll probably leave it this way, is do them one at a time. So each of you have your transcript. With your transcript, we're going to use um, what we call the AB system. You're going to go through each of the elements in your transcripts, the words, the sketches. If the sketches are more than very simple sketches, there may be multiple elements on one sketch. You use that as your judgment. And mark each one of those elements with the letter A. Now, as you're doing that, you're also going to be noticing whether or not you've got the gestalts. If there's a good match on gestalts, what might be a good gestalt here? Um, food, um, even round might might be the kind of gestalt match that that I think would work here. Um, you know, possibly even if you did a bunch of lines, you'd certainly mark that and crisscrossing each other. Uh, you got a smell of food. All of those would be A's. Whether they're at the level of Gestalt, that's going to be your judgment from zero to one. But right now, go through each element, mark it with an A, and if you think it rises to the level of contributing to the Gestalt of this, you might mark that as a GA. Um, a lot of people used to put Fig A, but you can just put GA for gestalt A, just to make it simpler, or fig A. Okay, so I'm giving you some time to do that. So now what we're doing is taking the approach one at a time. Uh, well, Patricia, I prefer if you um, waited um, to send it until after you've done the judging. Uh, you know, if you're leaving or something, that's fine. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Just do the judging of this one. Now, judging typically takes, um, you know, a while. Um, you've probably got enough memory on this. And I actually hope people who are listening to this um, on the recording actually did a session, even though, uh, you know, it won't come into the group judging. You know, a month away, uh, their session will, in fact, be valid. And they should be doing judging now as well. Okay, so let's now go down. Don't do the counting of it or any of that yet. We'll do that later. So right now, all you've done is marked A's against them all and maybe some um, 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 GA's or Fig A's. Okay, now I've got the second one here. Go ahead and mark them with B's. OK, 
Okay. I'm looking at Evelyn's list of um, gestalts, and on this one, certainly water, certainly man-made. See, now at the level of biological, there's some grass there, but is it big enough to be a first impression gestalt? I would give that, you know, in, in terms of the final zero to one you come up with, I wouldn't give that a whole lot of credit if all you if all you got were biological. Motion, energy, space, air, and land. So this has got almost all of those to some level. And so let's say you only got some of those. When you judge this, um, the fact that you missed some of major gestalts, you wouldn't give yourself a one just because you got one or two of them correct. Let's say you might give yourself a 0.3 or a 0.4. This is where the judging comes in at the level of gestalts. And as you probably already see at the level of um, even element matches. Okay, so now you've marked all the elements with B or paying attention to the gestalts. The next thing that will come up on this page is something like this, where I show them both. You can go back, finish your judging. Ultimately, we have to come up with these confidence levels between 0 and 7 for photocyte A and photocyte B. So you're now doing the judging session states, and we always want you, and it's important, to put in your thoughts and feelings when you finish with this in here. Now remember, I'm doing it for all of us, so when I do the group judging, I will finish that. Okay, now let's just briefly talk about the counting. On your transcript, you should do a count of the total number of elements so that you can do the element you marked A divided by that total number. And then you'll also be able to do the total number of that match B, divide that by the total. And so you have the two fractions that go along with the 0 to 1 for the element match. And so you should put that somewhere on your sheet of paper, that ratio. And then also, what are going to be the um, first element gestalt match for A and for B? So this is analytical. Um, but not hard analytical, I don't think. And it's a way of getting over, oh, gee, I feel really good because I got this thing here. Um, and it also actually relieves stress, I think, because, you know, you're going to be doing this every time this way. And the judgments come in uh, in terms of the overall number you come up with. And in your element matches, I guess I'll also add, and when we look at these, we, we can talk a little bit about that. Sometimes the element match is so good um, that you almost want to give it a point and a half. Um, and you can do that as a judge. Uh, but, you know, again, you don't want to push it too hard um, because experience has shown. And also, by knowing a judge is not going to push it too hard, it gets you as a remote viewer to do better remote viewing. You need to give more precise information. That's your intention as time goes on. You want to get better and better at your remote viewing session. So ultimately, the judging is trivial.
Okay, now what I would like you to do, and I know all of you are going at different paces and, and you take all the time that's necessary to do, to do the judging, um, but some of you who might be done, what I'd like you to do is there's in the chat box, you can send it just to me. I don't want anybody else to be influenced by how you judge yours. The judging is completely independent, needs to be that way. So in the chat box, send to me your ultimate confidence ranking between um, zero and seven for A. You can just say CRA and then a number, and then CRB and a number between zero to seven. In fact, if you want to just say A, zero to seven, and B, zero to seven, that's fine too. And then I'm going to keep a table of that and then we'll share that when I make the group prediction. And then after you do that, upload your transcript um, to my email. So I'll put my email in here to everybody. You all have it already, but I'll put it here. And then we'll be able to go over them and talk about them. Okay, that's great. And Patricia, if if you don't mind, send me um, through the chat box personally to, to administrator or there's some word like that or my name, just to me the CRA and then your CRB. And, and then we will look at your transcript um, shortly. But first I need to get the CRA and CRB from everybody. It probably will get through. I'll look at it later. But right now, I just want everybody to look at the two possible targets so they can do their judging. But Patricia, it probably got through. They usually do. Okay, great. I'm now getting him. Yep, I've got it. Right, Anita. And you're not the only one. That's why I spend so much time on judging. You know, until the sessions are so clear that it's not an issue, judging will be an issue. Okay, thank you, Evelyn. Uh, 
Oh, that's great. I'm glad you were able to use the chart, Evelyn. <laughs> Okay, let me see if I can now start getting this from the transcripts. And do keep, um, those of you who are going, please take as much time as you need. The judging is a key part of ARV. So let me get this so you can still see it. And now let's open up my email and we'll start to bring up the transcripts. Okay. So, so far, right. So, so far I only have Patricia's Oops. Okay, I, I've got your email, but I don't have the attachment, Patricia. Let's see if it's here. Nope. So you have to figure out, um, and I guess that's what you were worried about, is how to get the transcript attached. Um, why don't you give it another another try well it isn't here so yeah I mean I looked at both of them and see neither of them have attachments I hope the rest of you that are giving me your coordinates are now also sending me um, your marked up your transcripts with the judging Okay, so let's see. Here's Anita. Yeah, and you see Anita has hers attached. So I'm going to put, I'll put hers up first. Okay, and it came across over here. Let me lower that. Okay, let me see if I can make that bigger and rotate it. Uh, okay, so that's pretty good. I don't think I can rotate it here. Oh, I can rotate, rotate. Oh, okay, very nice. Okay, so there's our first transcript. Now, again, as I say, we'll we'll get to them all. So, but anybody who um, is finishing their judging, do finish your judging, and um, and then upload your transcript. Okay, so Anita, um, why don't you put up your mic and you can walk us through this. Okie dokes. I actually <clears throat> got stuck in hemisync, so I ran out of time. So I actually did this <laughs> afterwards. Uh -huh. um, but the idea I got was of um, land and water. Yep. 
um, but I also um, got the like uh, clouds, um, yep. structures, um, something like the, like that reminded me of a shape like a banana and the color also, but um, funny, the color it was in the other picture um, of the buildings. Right, and I see your circles here. You gave that an A. Um, okay, let me go from the top. Uh -huh. Okay, the first one that looks okay. like, almost like a uh, ooh, uh, top right, the next idea. There uh, with there. the land is yes, yeah. uh, almost like a zigzaggy thing. That was the the shape I got initially. Uh -huh. um, that yeah. kind of reminded me of water. Um, and then I went go lower the color. Um, I got more like bright light, um, like uh, almost like the sh sun shining in your eyes. It's like uh, buildings, water, land, um, but then the colors I got um, was a bit weird. Um, yeah, you got so many colors. Yes, yeah. it's a lot of information, there's a little bit of everything, but not overpowering right. really. One way or another. Well, let me ask you about yes. the smells. Um, um, dusty, the, and you gave dusty, them. The Yes, it, it reminds me when I saw the chicken. I remind it reminded me of spices I always used to use when I make chicken. <laughs> oh, it okay. Smells a bit, almost like nutmeg, dusty. Um, yes. I see. Um, okay, so you did have that connection at the time. Yes. Uh, yes. And and um, you put the word dusty, but it really was closer to the smell. Okay, that's good. That's good. It's weird how you associate things with other things and then you only make the connection afterwards when you see the picture. You see, this is a, an interesting example of why self-judging versus independent judging is controversial. Because when I saw Judge mm -hmm. Dusty as an independent judge… It'll get anything, totally something would've... totally different. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I would have I made it a B. Um, yeah, that's so... why um, I think… Yeah, with with the judging, it helps a lot when you when the when the judge afterwards um, discuss the feedback. And um, uh -huh. So there's uh, uh, because uh, the judge almost uh, don't always um, get the same associations as the the viewer. I, I totally totally agree, and that's true even like in your case of self judging. You know, when it's A, you got yeah. to remind yourself, oh, gee, that was really um, what happened there, and that was a good match. When we do feedback yeah. now, I, I really recommend you only check your judging against the actual one. You know, again, over time, yes. that'll yeah. be good. I don't yeah. need to look at the other one anymore. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's good. So you ended off, now let me just see. So A, um, and there was a B, and then where are your fig numbers? Did you, did you do them? My fig um, the, at the right side, the, under the AOLs, uh, the percentage is 7 out of 17, B, 10 out of 17. Oh, yeah, I see uh, that for the elements. I see the element count. I just don't. That's see, for the elements, yeah. I don't see a um, fig uh, number, but obviously you did it because you came up with. Um, um, two numbers, Anita, uh, and higher for B. So this was higher. Um, but did you do the fit? Oh, yeah. Well, there it is. There's a GB. Okay, so you probably estimated it and decided what you wanted to do rather than giving it a specific number because I just don't see it here. Hey, and that's fine. The no, yeah, I basically, I basically, you know, I basically counted the, the elements because they were like uh, figs for both. Yes. But I'm looking at the, the, you know, you got water, which would be, and this looks like water. Um, so I would say your GBs are probably higher on that side as well. So you basically went more for photo side B, um, um, which is which is fine. Thank you. That's that's great. 
Okay, this, this was very nicely done. <laughs> if I've got anything right, it will be a miracle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, your two scores, um, you know, your two scores are, are good, 3.5 and 4.5. Um, and I wouldn't disagree with that. Um, I think that's good. Okay, thank you. Let's go on to the, the next one. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. I don't need to save anything. And um, let me now go back here. And let's see. Let's see. Yeah, we got an image, Patricia. Oh, yeah. it says we've got an image. Oh, that's the subject, but there's no attachment. Darn it. And I know that's just what you're saying. Um, you know, maybe you can just take a picture. Do you have a smartphone? Take a picture from it and um, just send it to me. Usually when you take a picture, there's a, a, an option to email it. You might just try, you might just try that. Okay, let's do Millie next. Okay, Millie left, so let's see what her transcript looks like compared to the pictures. Okay, Millie, are you you are gone? Yeah, it looks like she left. Okay, so we'll we'll do it. Um, oh, okay. Plus two point four five. I don't know how you get a two point four five. So I need to talk to her. She gave hers low. Let me see if she marked. There's a, a B for glowing, A for dry with a question mark, and I would say that's right because this isn't dry. A B for howling. That's actually pretty good since it's definitely noisy. Circular was an A. Rectangular. Well, I suppose that's rectangular, but I would say uh, I would do that as mostly B. Circular, yes. Okay. 11 out of 27, 9 out of 27. Okay. Again, people don't seem to want to jump with the first gestalt. There have been systems where they didn't use the first gestalt. All they would use is the element matches. But I happen to agree with Joe that the gestalt's are important. Well, she gave um, these two very low numbers. And she's not here. I'm not sure they should be that low. But also, this doesn't look like it would be wagerable, though this looks like the building's and water. She got sour for a smell. Okay, so I think we've done enough. Um, um, thank you, Millie. We'll just leave her CRs. You know, I'm trying to evaluate whether or not they're right because I'm going to make a group judgment, and um, occasionally I think they should be modified and I'll say so and I'm not the best judge in the world either but since I make the group ju judgment that's what the group manager does okay Evelyn let's look at yours okay very nice To make it even a little bit bigger. Okay, why don't you turn on your mic? 
Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. okay. Um, well, I, uh, you know, my home state of California is burning up again, so I was afraid I was being influenced a little bit by the news that I heard today. Yeah, my, um, yeah. Yeah, a big, uh, bur that big fire in Ventura and Hollywood. No, I'm, I'm, I'm very close to the Getty one. Not very close, but in the valley. And I have yeah. family who is close. Okay. Anyway, let's... And I, have, and I also have family down there. So, you know, that sort of right. thing's in the back of your mind. So I was, I, you know, like the things I wrote on the side, because it was almost looking like a forest fire, but I knew it couldn't be. But, you know, I was... So I Blowing. had to keep bringing myself yeah. back. But but the, the very first... Uh, I, I did the de Gestalt's first and the, and the ideogram and... And uh, and then I went from there, like she said. And so I got the biological, the green, the moving, the water, the man-made, the land, and the wind. Uh -huh. And and those were all real strong. And and some of the colors I, I added later. The glowing was the only color I could get to start with. It was this glowing, glowing yellow light. And and I felt like it was kind of behind things. And and so then. I knew there was something that was like stick-like or straight up and down, and it it seemed like a forest, but I, I didn't really think it was a forest. So, because in the beginning it didn't look, and then of course then it starts looking like a forest. So I had to bring myself back from that, and I so then I started writing words, and I wrote down the colors, and and then then when I the second image I got, it was like a valley, and and it was a, like a valley with 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 trees and then something in the back that was either mountains or trees or something sticking up and I got the idea of a lookout post and you know in forest service they have a lookout post that looks over so that that one tall building looks exactly like a lookout post so I think that that was good and and so I was Anyway, I, it definitely my second sketch looks like a, basically looks like that city with the kind of little valley in front. And and I had already gotten the idea of wind and water. And I think it's a windy day and it's, it's smoky in the background. So I definitely think I've got more from side B. Um, OK, and, yep. and that's how you the write it. Which... The colors were there from side A and the. You know, a little bit of this, the, the way the celery is stacked could be that first sketch had a little bit that could have been the celery stacked on end, but I really felt like it wasn't. Okay. Anyway, nice. so I, I loaded it more. Yeah, here's your arithmetic. I loaded much more to, to be, and, and, and the fig, I gave it a six tenths on the fig. For B. Um, uh -huh for B and I didn't give any fig for A. So uh, yeah, I, I divide the elements and that got the 24, 0.24. Very good. And so I gave that a one and then I divide the elements plus the fig right. and, and got a 1.44 and put it on that color graph and it, and it gave That's it a 4.8. So I gave it a five. Right. Rounding up is, rounding is fine. You know, yeah, I just I felt like it, this just, was a strong drawing in the middle, and that's why I gave it a five. Otherwise, I'd have given it a four point five. But, um, but it was clearly I, you know, towards B. And I good. and I I don't think I was having lots of you know displacement or anything anything other than the, the, the trying to not make it into a forest fire. And I knew that it, <laughs> that I had to not do that, but. But actually, you know, the, some of the things fit. Yeah, well, well yeah. thinking about not doing it probably helps make it happen a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I mean, while I was looking at the image that I was seeing, I, I knew right. I couldn't make that into a forest fire because I could easily have. But the idea of, like, kicking up, that's what's going behind that boat. The water's kicking up. So, yep. Yep. you know, quite a few of those words I got. No, that fit. was very good. Very good. Anyway, then, I, I, th I feel like it was a good session. And... And and uh, the last one I did for the carve group, I used these these same you know the gestalts the same yep. way, yep. and I got a really good fig on that one. So and I got a good hit. So I, I'm I'm I was getting pretty discouraged 
because I just couldn't seem to do anything right. And and um, part of it was the judging. I wasn't judging right. But anyway, I think I've kind of turned a corner here. I feel good about these, these two sessions. Evelyn, that is really, really terrific. I mean, it just shows how you – you, you're learning. I want to add one thing for everybody, which you did, which we've talked about before, and I'm glad you did it, and newbies should note this. Notice the capital B versus the little b. And I think when she counts, you would count like a little b would be a half. This is the kind of weighting um, which, which goes on um, in terms of judging. So it, it doesn't have to be you know, uh, just a capital B, you can make a little B out of it. And um, and thank you for doing that, Evelyn. The other thing about the gestalts here, once you knew about the six of them, um, you didn't do anything special here except sort of allow yourself and ask about the gestalts first and let come up whatever came up. Is that right? Yes, I just I get through those gestalts and then I kind of, uh, uh, close my eyes and you know see what see what comes in the way of a of a of an image that and and it fit the gestalt so so it felt good right uh, you know but you allow other gestalts to come in too I can see here which is good you know you've got the basic ones in your list of six and that's terrific um, but asking yourself and it looks like that's what you did here you ask yourself first give me the gestalts. And then you got those, and then you went on. And I think that's and, a very good strategy. And some of them were added. I didn't have that many to start with. I water was as much as I got with my. And then I added oh. the man-made land and wind as I was going along. I thought, oh, this oh, you get up stuff there. here, and then you put them up there. Okay. I put them up there because I realized they they went along with everything I was seeing. But the but the ones I got first was love, biological, green, moving, and water. Those okay. those are the the original that I got so I knew I was going to be probably ha sometimes like love who knows do I yeah. love the chicken I I bought chicken nuggets at Walmart last night and that's what I had a, had before the session so maybe that's what 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 that one was but anyway thank you thank you Evelyn um Patricia we're just not getting it I know you must be frustrated when we're finished here you stay on, and I'll work with you alone until we get one, okay? But I don't think I want to do it in the main part of the seminar. Marty, did you get Lila's? Did you get mine? Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at that now. Oh, okay. So, I, you know, Patricia's been trying, and she was the first one. So, oh. But here you are. Um, and uh, let me turn it around. So, and then I'll put it next to there, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so to turn it around, I need to use Snagit. So here's Snagit. Well, I took too much, but that's okay. And then I've got my editor. And then I can rotate it. And then we'll copy it. Well, or I could probably just use it like this. Let's see. Yeah, we'll use it like this. Okay, Lila, here we go. Okay, so why don't you tell us how it went, you know, summarize it. And I did not get, oh, you probably put it in the chat box. I don't have your... I did not put anything in the chat box, sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, but I have my score up at the top. 
Okay, there you go. Two and three point five. Good. I'll put it in my table. Okay, so tell us about um, what happened here. Well, um, so I was not in my usual viewing space, which is at right. home. I'm on the road right now. Right. And so this is a very different experience for me. And I, um, I was settled. I was calm, but I didn't. I had difficulty getting precepts, getting a lot of precepts, which is why there aren't very many on the page. Uh huh. Um. Okay. One of my AOLs is clouds, and there's definitely clouds in Buddha Site B. Right. So I was getting something. Right. <laughs> and, um, um, I guess I could have, as far as my, my case go, I could have marked bland for B, um, because certainly Buddha Site A is not bland. Right. So, but I forgot to mark that. Um. My ideograms are are my deciding factors, um, usually, most most of the time. And I just got very pointy things going up, 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 up. And that's right. definitely what photosite B is. Right. Um, <laughs> and the cloud, like. Yeah. Was that yeah, an ideogram? You use that as an ideogram, yeah. actually, this time. Well, I marked it A because of the chicken nuggets, but maybe that's a cloud. So I can mark it A B. Interesting. Right. I would I would say so. Okay. Yeah. But all of my other ideograms go up, 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 up. Right. So I was getting definitely something high. And um my dimensions I did say tall, thick, pointy. Okay. Um my dynamics pretty much cover sight B as well. Now so how did you do you how did you do the numbers? Did you, you? I don't see you didn't do the element ratios or any of that here. Oh, you went. I did it. Straight. I did it after I. You know what? I was in such a hurry to send this to you because yeah. I wanted to get it in on time. Okay. Um, Looking so at I it, I would have to say that that's probably going to be maybe B or even higher. I mean, you've got a lot of Bs here. Um, I do have a lot of Bs. And the Gestalt. Uh, I don't know what. What I would do for the Gestalt, you know, even though you marked that as an A, you certainly could see that as a cloud. Sure. And the sure. up, up, up. But um, yeah. no, I don't disagree. I'll, I, I think the 3.5 okay. is not right. That's good. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Lila. That's You're thank you. That's nice. Um, I would like to know. Uh, if you do this in the future analytically, how you feel about that, and if it agrees with what you would do if you did straight targ. We've done a few examples so far, and in fact, the agreement's been pretty good. But, um, you know, I'd like to get more feedback about that from, from everybody. Okay, so let's... <laughs> Patricia, we'll give you one more shot here. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> and this time you know for sure because you saw it when you sent it out. Good for you. Good for you. You figured it out. Very nice. Okay, let me turn it around. Um, yeah, so I, I, I don't think there's a way of doing it from here. No, so I'll, I'll, the snag it away doesn't take too long. It takes longer than I would like. Oops. Okay, so I will capture this. Oh. Is there more down below here? Yeah, it looks like there is. What is that? Oh, there it is. That's the whole thing. Okay. And now I 
just need to rotate it. Rotate counterclockwise. There we go. So let's get rid of that and that. And there we go. Okay. Nice, Patricia. See, next time it'll be so much easier now. <laughs> okay, you have your mic. Um, you don't have a mic. Okay, let me see. I'll just, okay, there's your two ratios. Um, very good about that. And I see the numbers that you gave. Wait, let me give this back. Uh, I get rid of that one. There's that one. Okay. Um, and right, eight out of fifteen. So that gets you a little over point five. Yep, outdoors is B. And let's see about the gestalts. What did you do? Yeah, there's your 5 and 2.6. Um, okay. Oh, so does this look... Yeah, you see, I can see that being food. Is that... Did you put your gestalt? You didn't put it on here. Why don't you put in the chat box? What did you give as a gestalt for A and, you know, 0 to 1 and a gestalt for B, 0 to 1? Because this sketch, I, I can almost interpret as both. This shape certainly looks like these shapes, but this might be water. I mean, you know, I don't know, but that's where your interpretation comes in. Okay, so did you get a sense of this being food while you were doing the session? It's always, you never get water? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I would try to work on that belief system. In fact, if water turns out to be the right one here, communicate with yourself what water is like. Uh, right, you got to get rid of the belief system, <laughs> or you'll never get water. So, um, okay, but I, I'm asking you a really important question for everybody, because while you're doing self-judging, and this only works for self-judging, it's okay to remember what you were experiencing when you put this down, and if you were experiencing something food-like. Obviously, then you give it credit for food. Oh, you're experiencing hot. Um, okay. Oh, that's why you said fire. Um, okay. Anyway, your feeling is it was food-like, so you gave it a reasonably high gestalt, which added to um, over 0.5 here. Um, got you up to your high score. Okay. Very good. Thank you, and I'm really glad you figured out how to get stuff um, here, because that's the same technique you can use, uh, well, let's see, or almost the same technique for uploading your transcripts, but you do have to figure out how to do that. But once you've got this, it was in your machine, so you ought to just put it someplace in a file where you can find it, and if that's a problem, call me and I'll you know, let me know and we'll work, we'll work through it the next time you need to do the upload, Patricia, okay? I'm happy to help you with that because I want you to keep doing your pre -cogging. And now let's do Lori. Oop. A two for A. Okay, let me put that in my table here. Okay. Uh, I did send it to you in the email. Okay, a two and then a five.
for B. Um, you got if you want, if you wanted to look at the session, you can see it in another email. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. Oh, there it is. Oops. It didn't. Um, was it earlier? Oh, I thought it showed up. I, when I looked at it myself, I saw it in there. All right. Um, okay. You know what I'm going to do? Is it on your screen? I haven't done this before, but we can do it for you because um, you're the last one here. Um, you're David. What yeah. I'm going to do is make you a presenter and I will see your screen. Everybody will see your screen. All right, it's blue. So then, you know, when you talk about it, we'll understand what you're talking about. You know, you gave it a five, and I, I for one, would like to understand how that happened. All right. So you need to click on something that says protect your, yeah, there you are. Okay, good. And now we just have to skip to your screen. I don't know why I'm not seeing your screen. Should I say show my screen? Yes, that's what you have to do. Okay. There you go. We're seeing your transcript. Okay, thanks. Really very right. cool, actually. Um, so I do my my um, distorts in the beginning with the ideograms, and I got you know I got my own biological three times, but since I couldn't see people in the city, even though I know they're there, uh -huh. I didn't count. So I don't know. But anyway, I did land. Did I see biological under B, not A? Is that what you meant? Or did you see the food as biological? Oh, for A? No, for A, I only had the color brown. Oh, okay, so you don't consider the chicken legs to be biological? No. For you, biological means people. Is that right? It means something that's a live person or animal that's alive. Alive now. <laughs> okay. You see, again, that's where self-judging. Okay, very good. Okay. I'm just trying to understand. I'm not criticizing in any way. The viewer is always in charge. So that's good. Right. Okay, so I'll do A first. Okay, I had brown, green, man-made, and white. So I gave myself a 2.0. Right. And then for the other one I had, for B I had land, natural, I had natural two times, motion, sky, water, um, blue, brown, yellow, green, man-made, White. Uh -huh. huh. So five out of five colors, I think, and um, six out of seven or eight gestalt. Right. And interesting, I like that you counted gestalts. Um, so you actually went in to each picture and counted their gestalts, or are these gestalts in your transcript? In my transcript. Okay. Uh-huh. Very interesting. You know, and everybody is going to come up with their own unique way. Um, I don't see the ratios on the sheet, but did you use the ratio approach for the elements? Well, and I had four matches and B I had 13. Yes, so was, it's sort of clear. <laughs> right. I don't know if that's what you mean. And the total might have been 20 or probably less. Um, okay. Well, I can see why you went with B. I would like to make one comment, though. You know, the words and the, I don't see any sketches a keyhole like that's interesting are what I would call hot yeah let's go further down is there more down there oh yeah there we go oh okay okay very good farm like that's interesting opening 
Yeah. Okay, well, you have sketches too. No, very good. You have enough. You know, it's like I, I feel if you get a high score in this scoring system but only put very little down, it doesn't mean as much. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you could get 100% if all you did was put down like five words and a sketch that matches something. But I wouldn't feel as confident then as if you had 20 elements and three or four sketches, which is just what you have. So um, that's f very good. Do you think it should be lower, like a four or something? Um, I don't know. You know, I'd want to really go through the, the judging technique, you know, that we've got here to see um, but you certainly have a lot of B's so the element uh, one is good I don't see a good sketch that I like though you could say maybe I'm circling your little rectangular thing here on the left yeah um, um, so go back up again let me just let me take another good look go back up again Yeah, you know, there was a circle-y yeah. thing there, here, right. The biological, you got a lot, and you explained the meaning of that. Yeah, I might only give it a four. You know, a five is, that word unambiguous to me, to me means really, really strong. Um, yeah. But nevertheless, you're clearly going in that direction. Okay, uh, thank you. So I wonder if there was a keyhole shape or a yin yang shape in that city somewhere that, that got those written down. Right, but I'm also thinking that's roundish. Which yeah, could, the yin yang could be the top of that little container, but the keyhole one that intrigues right. me. Right, keyhole is kind of good for a B, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me just see. Very good. So we've taken all of these. So I'm going to take the presentation back and I'll show you all the uh, summary I have. Um, so first I've got to get back. To here. And make myself the presenter. I have two screens, so as I'm talking to myself, you probably don't understand at all. But I'll make myself the presenter. Okay. I am now the presenter. And let me bring this over here. Okay, so take a look here and make sure I've got your confidence rankings correct. Um, and then I'm going to, to see what I usually do is mark anything over 3.5 with a yellow. And there. And the 3.5s. You know, there's always something, in my opinion, and see, and I'm the one who's now doing the group judging. Um, well, things that are on the margin are always sort of special in the sense that you tend, um, in my experience, people tend to go for them. Um, I don't give it quite as much weight, not only because it's lower, but because it's a 3.5. But in this case, looking at this, you know, these are passes. Even if we changed Lori's to a 4, 
Um, the other thing which I like very much about all of these fives, including this one, um, is that they're like two or more apart. Even one apart is is better. Sometimes you see things where they're only half apart, but this is one apart. Um, but that's not as strong as something like this being four apart, mm -hmm. because it says the two, the viewer did pick up the things which were unique to that side, which is sort of the secondary tasking, but an important one. Um, so I think looking at this, we probably all agree that the prediction is for side B. And I need to give overall CRs for this. So let me let me do I'll do group. Well, in fact, I guess I could do it up here. Group uh, CRs. Um, so looking at all of this, I'm not a believer in averages. But, you know, probably I'll give it a 3.5, make it wagerable. And this one, I'm going to go with the 5, more like the highest. Mm. Um, okay. Okay, so once I've done that, now you guys, once individually you had your own numbers, then you would go down and put them in here just like I'm going to do for the group. So again, the point I'm making is the protocol itself, the online protocol, is really very straightforward. It's doing the ARVing where you want to have most of your energy, and that's, I think, where you'll be able to put most of your time because the protocol itself is very simple. So now I put in 3.5, I put in 5, I'm going to put in a comment. So this is um, group um, um, prediction for the, I notice everybody else used Bitcoin, so I'll do that too, for the Bitcoin prediction. And hey, this, Marty. Uh-huh. Is that... It, that, that isn't New York's whole city. Is it part of part of Manhattan or whatever? You know, I thought New York was big, the no, island was bigger. No, that than doesn't look. That's not the New York um, uh, skyline okay. at all. I didn't. I didn't think yeah, so. Yeah, so I don't it really know. Small. No, whatever I can't is, even find out. Off, yeah, I don't know what it got, is. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, mm -hmm. at the very high level, when you're doing judging, you would never even care. You you want to use your descriptors no. and stuff like that. Um, you know, but if city came up or something like that, which is um, that would certainly be a good match. OK. And so maybe I'll also say um, there were two CR equal fives and one CR equal four just to remind myself when we look at this a month from now because this will be available to us um, okay and a and one three point five. Okay, so that's it. So, and it is important to put this in. I am just starting to bring in some artificial intelligence um, software. I'm actually looking at some software that will look at words and give ideas on whether you're positive or negative about it, um, um, which might affect what I do for group predicting. So you really should put in here how you feel about this and what's going on. You know, as a group, um, 
you know, I guess I can say I feel <laughs> pretty good about this. Uh, um, about this um, with using uh, one target for everyone. But we do talk about a lot of the targets. Um, Okay, but I do. I feel pretty good about this and the judging. And so we then hit submit. Ah, and for the first time, notice I look right down here because that's almost what everybody does. Um, the prediction is a no. So we're saying that, um, and it's down here, the event, will the Bitcoin be over 14,000 on January 6th? The answer is no. Um, which is actually interesting because the way it's moving up, just looking at the chart, I would say yes. Um, but we predicted no. We're obviously not 100%. This pattern that you see here is um, typical. Um, we rarely get all the people on one side. Um, and there have been occasions when that's happened when they've all been wrong. <laughs> and there have been occasions when the one or two people who might be on the opposite side turn out to be right. The, this business, when we're working with people who are not at the Joe McMonagle level yet, and that's where we hope you all go, um, it makes sense that we're in the probability range where stuff like this will happen regularly. Okay, so that's the prediction. Um, prediction uh, is um, for side B, and that turned out to be a no. Okay, so I'll save that. And you can see the way I do this. And I do like to do this in real time, and you get to understand a little better how all of this works so you can evaluate it uh, yourself. Here's the Bitcoin. We now said no. And um, so that goes in here. Um, I'll add the coordinates and this is the, in fact, let me add the coordinate right now. So that's three, three, two, seven, one, three. So that's how I can find it. Um, and this other number is something from the server that you really don't have to be concerned about. But again, that just helps me find it if there are issues. Um, so now let's finish this off. Thank you all. This is so um, interesting to me. Here. Um, were there any questions or anything about that whole judging process and what we just did? Because that's what you'll be doing individually. So I hope, um, you know, this helped you understand it a little better. And a lot of the comments that you got hopefully will help too. The stuff about the gestalts and it was interesting to see the way Evelyn did it and some of the others, the way they scored the, the, the gestalts, all of that is really very important and you'll be doing that hopefully in your own uh, judging. Um, okay, now we're all about precognition, but precognition really implies retrocausality because precognition means that you, in our example, but this is true really in general, in our example, when you're the remote viewer, you are, one way or another, gathering information from what we usually see as the future. You know, there are a lot of philosophical arguments as the eternal now. There's a lot of different ways of looking at it. But you're getting information from what we usually consider to be the future. And therefore, the future is sharing information with you, causing you to put those words down on your transcript. 
That's what retrocausality is all about. It's all about a mindset. When you're talking about this stuff, not doing it, when you do it, you forget all this bullshit and you just do it, <laughs> right? But when we talk about it, when you're thinking here as what the remote viewer does, he or she is looking forward in time, pre-cognition. The cognition is when you know it. You know it here. That's why it's pre-cognition. But when you're in the feedback mindset, what does the feedback do? And that should be your intent. When you're here, what you're doing is causing information to happen earlier. That's the retrocausal part. So they're both intimately connected. They both imply each other. And this is a mystery. <laughs> if anybody tells you they understand it, they're bullshitting you. This is a mystery. We do not understand it. I do believe it's related to quantum mechanics somehow and non-locality and all that. But that still doesn't tell me. I don't understand how quantum mechanics works. Nobody does. Um, I mean, it comes down to the best I can do is say things like, Consciousness is fundamental, and I really believe that, but does that take away any of the mystery? No. However, just like I don't understand how my computer works or how my car works or how the Internet works in detail, um, consciousness is able to do this, and ARV and remote viewing is one way to make it work in a practical way. The other point I like really to make at, at the end here, because I think it's so important, is we are involved in something much bigger than ARV. What all of this demonstrates is that your present life, what happens right now, and that's the thing you know the most, your present moment, the past is a memory. Your future is like a future memory. It's going to become the present and the future, and it'll have as much reality as this present moment has. But there's something special about this present moment. You know it with more certainty than anything else, your conscious now experience. And what precognition and retrocausality show is the past and the future are influencing you right now. And you can use that because the right now that you have, you can, with feeling good about it, send positive information backwards in time, knowing you're going to do that in the future. And I think that's how you can improve your health, which is the other area I'm quite interested in, and I believe it is very much related to what we're doing. Because your now moments go both in the past and they go into the future. That's what ARV shows. That's what precognition and retrocausality show. Okay. And all of this, I really hope, helps all of us with our healthy, wealthy, and wise lives. Um, and that's the reason for doing all this really is to improve your life. Um, and part of that is enjoying what you're doing. Thank you. I'm going to stop with that. Questions, comments? If not, you know, this is usually where we finish this off. And I think, you know, unless there are any comments, we can do that. And I really hope you um, sort of take this whole issue of it's being bigger than uh, our normal way of looking at life to heart. I'm saying that as I'm trying to find my... Ability to stop this. I've now lost it. I 
think it's up here someplace. Do you believe this can be related to your health? I wonder if you're still with me. Are you guys still with me? Since I can't find this, somebody talk talk to me. I'm here yet, Marty. Oh, okay, good. And I see Lila's comment. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking to find, I'm double clicking. I don't have my um, usual go to meeting link up here. So I think it's hiding someplace. This one I know I can get rid of. Oh, <laughs> okay, hi. Oh, I can't hear you, but I'm seeing you. Hi, I was trying to get myself up. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to, and I'm having trouble. I'll probably have to edit this and end it. There's a little X, but it's not. Should I do that? I'm not still a presenter or anything, right? I'm hearing you, though, so I haven't stopped this yet. There's got to be a way to stop it short of turning off my machine. Ah, uh, I now found me. Okay. Okay, I will be able to now end this for everybody. I'm sorry that took so long.